Alright, so I want to show you an idea for like a 21st century version of an id stone trap. But we're going to slightly change it to an id stone trap specifically for mice. You could scale this up and do it for rats. Um, first of all, what I want to do is read you a bit out of this book so you kind of get the idea of what the id stone trap was about. So I'll read it to you. So the, the device which I am now about to describe is in the nature of a pit trap or rather a combination of traps and was the invention of or originally described by Idstone years ago. It is in the nature of a permanent trap as once prepared it only requires occasional attention to ensure it's remaining in working order as long as you choose to maintain it. A suitable site must be chosen where there is an old where there is old close pasture or moss ridden grass and a pit is excavated. First the turf is carefully removed to a depth of about three inches and then a square chamber formed not less than three foot square and from at least fifteen inches to two foot deep. Uh, according to its area. A wooden cover of two inch deal or preferably one and a half inch elm must be made having an aperture in the centre at least 18 inches square with a corresponding lid. Uh, two or more corners of the pit entrances must be made as shown in figure 42. That's figure 42 there. They must be from 3 inch to 4 inch in diameter and slope down from the surface like the entrance of a rabbit burrow. There is an easy way to form it. Obtain a piece of willow of the necessary size and length, say 4 foot by 4 inches, and slightly curved. Across the flat of one end, nail a cross piece 1 foot long. Then, with a narrow spade or draft is the technical term for it, dig out a sloping channel to the required depth. After having turned the turf back in the direction required, then lay your willow piece in the channel so that one end protrudes into the chamber. Fill in, fill in the soil on top, tread it heavily down but working the wood from side to side and by twisting the cross piece. Then when it is ready, withdraw the timber and the small artificial burrow will remain taut and trim upon the inside. Now prepare a spindle as shown at D and drive it in firmly into the ground until its upper end is on a level with the cover. Then set and tie open four gin traps. Lane's collapsible traps cannot be beaten for the purpose and dispose them as shown in figure 43. Do not use a long chain but peg them down with an iron stake attached to an S hook fixed on the traps. And there's the diagram. So you see the four gin traps in the middle. Obtain two or three small birds or young rabbits and place them in the trap. Cover it over and place the turf removed over the cover. Visit the trap in two or three days and see if the baits have been taken away. If not, wait another two or three days until the vermin have found out your lures. As soon as they do, renew the supply and when this again is taken, set the traps carefully. It is not necessary to cover them, but this may be done if preferred. The great point is to make sure that stoats, weasels or rats, as the case may be, are regularly running the trap before commencing to catch them. Because the fact that one or more secured will have little or no influence upon the others. And it is by no means unusual when working this contrivance to have a capture in each of the four traps at one time. The pit should be visited every morning to remove anything caught and fresh bait supplied from time to time until it fails to attract. And tie down the traps again and feed as before, thus preparing for a second campaign. Wherever stoats and weasels and rats abound in woodland breaks and the like, one of these idstone traps should be prepared. Once the vermin find it out and run freely, it is surprising how effective they are. I had one placed, one of the first I ever made, in a corner of a plantation, about 15 yards from the corner. There were two gateways in the opposite hedgerows fitted with poles to lift out and as there was a pathway through the corner it was a favourable position and within about three weeks I took upwards of 60 head of various vermin in one trap pit. 
from this it is easy to know the class of site to choose the arrangement. They may be placed in any suitable spots with or without a covert, but not in situations where horses or cattle are likely to pass as such knock the whole thing to pieces. If any trap pits are going to be formed it is better to provide separate coverings for each and not necessarily remove the covers from the temporarily ineffective ones. The latter can be left for a time and be, and be made ship shape again when required for further use. It is curious to note that in connection with this trap that Idstone, although referring to and praising it in his writing on game preserving, left the scantiest description and the roughest plan possible for his idea, which I had in my possession for some years before I could make head or tail of them. I may therefore, with all diffidence, claim to have resurrected his scheme of trapping. Right, so we're going to resurrect it again but in a slightly different form and a slightly easier form to do and probably more portable. So what I've done, I've thought of a possible way of making a kind of modern idstone trap for, let's say mice. You could scale this up bigger. It's going to have to be quite a lot bigger though for rats. I've got a box with a lid on it. And what I've done, I've made a hole in one corner and then in the opposite corner on the other side, another hole big enough for a mouse to get in. And then what you would do, you could secure these if you wanted. I've got three rat traps, uh, mouse traps, and you would place them inside the trap. Now if you had a big enough box, you could do it how the Eardstone trap was, so like that, so like one, two, three, and then one more here, if you had a big enough box. But we're going to do it like this, so one on one side, and then two on the other side. And what you would do, pretty much the same as a normal Eardstone trap, Find a place where you've got mice, put this down, bait your traps but don't set them. Put some bait in there as well. Let the mice keep coming so they get used to coming in here, taking it. Then set the traps, put your lid on, and then come back when you need you know when you need to and check and see how many mice you've got. I think that would be a pretty good method, especially for um, if you've got non-target animals around, you know, bigger animals that you don't want getting at um, mouse traps. So, not much I need to really say because from reading in the book, you kind of got the idea anyway. But you could scale it up, definitely for rats. Obviously, you can't use gin traps anymore. So you'd have to use normal rat traps. And I was thinking, I wondered if possibly you could make this with um, fen traps. But I don't know whether that would be possible or not. You know, I'm not sure what the legality of that. Because they say a tunnel. But then you may be able to put them in a box. But you, you want, the key is you want more than one trap in there. Because it's pointless. You want it so you've got a few traps in there. Four at least. <laughs> The four if you can, you know, there's three in this one. Um, because once the animals are all coming in, you should be able to catch a few in there rather than just having one in there and only catching one. You probably could have put, put four in it. You probably could have put them over there, maybe four on one side. You could arrange it how you want to. Bigger box, you know, more traps in there. Once they're coming in, and they start getting used to it, you should be able to catch quite a few. Right, anyway, so yeah, a 21st century version of the Idstone Trap. Alright, cheers for watching, I'll see you later.